What is going on guys and welcome back to the YouTube channel and the cover model body series which is exactly where I'm going to teach you how you can build a cover model physique. Now today I'm going to talk to you guys about pre-workout meals, the kind of foods that I would consume pre-workout, when to consume pre-workout meals, give you a few options whilst I'm actually making my pre-workout meal as well as I'm going to be going to the gym shortly so I'm going to actually do it live and talk to you about what I'm having while I'm having it. So pre-workout nutrition is going to be very important when you're trying to get in shape. The reason for that is because we want to really try and aid performance as much as possible. We want to make sure we're performing optimally in the gym. We want to give our body as best chance as possible in terms of building the muscle mass and being in a really good state. So we need to make sure we're fueling our body well. Now, I recommend that you consume your pre-workout meal. I say anywhere between one to three hours, one to two hours probably before you train, very much dependent on what you have and your schedule. And now if you train in a faster state, which a lot of people do, a lot of our clients do, you have to remember that your pre-workout meal is essentially going to be the night before so you need to make sure that you're taking on a decent amount of nutrients and a decent amount of food the night before which is going to obviously fuel your morning workout so what i'm going to talk to you about now and what i'm going to actually prepare is my pre-workout meal now what i have is gluten-free oats okay 100 grams of gluten-free oats 100 grams of berries 20 grams of peanut butter good quality peanut butter i'm going to show you and then i have some whey protein with that as well now i've recently bought carbohydrates back into my pre-workout so i went into a ketogenic state for like six weeks however decided that i really want to fuel performance you probably saw in one of my previous videos so bringing in carbs pre-workout and post-workout is a more optimal uh, stance for me to take now moving forward so i'm going to get straight to it i'm just going to show you guys exactly what i have so this is my uh back to my supplement cupboard but also keep quite a lot of foods in here nothing too uh fun to see in that cupboard it's more very healthy food so these are the oats that i'm currently having the reason why i choose gluten free oats is because i feel like gluten just does not respond well with me my body doesn't tolerate it very well i think most people have got some sort of gluten intolerance a lot of people have got a lactose a dairy intolerance as well so you've got to be quite careful when it comes to that so if i can find a gluten free product which still tastes good i always will use that and gluten free oats for me have always worked really well um and i also choose rolled oats the reason why i choose rolled oats is because the instant oatmeal is very different in terms of glycemic index so the way that your body absorbs that nutrient and you don't want something that's going to cause a massive spike in insulin so if you get some of the cheaper oatmeal the instant oats this is not going to be too great for you especially for a pre-workout meal i just found that they would give me more cravings having those kind of oats so rolled oats of a very better quality you can get steel cut oats they're a really good quality as well gluten free again it's just gonna be less inflammation in my gut don't want inflammation before we train i want to keep that nice and low so we'll grab the bowl always use scales as goes about saying but you cannot guess food you're going to get it wrong it takes 30 seconds to put well, it takes less than that it takes this 10 seconds to put some uh, bowl on the scales you want to get the serving exactly right i've been doing this for like probably 10 years you know i've been like going to the gym for that long i still use scales because i don't trust myself and i know i'm making a mistake and it's just not worth making that mistake um, I'll take kitchen scales pretty much everywhere I go. My mum doesn't have electric scales, so when I go back to the UK, um, I take these with me because I don't want to take any risks when it comes to weighing food. It's super important. So, a little bit of milk. Now, I actually do use uh, dairy low-fat milk. The reason why I do that is because I had a bit of a realisation that you would think almond milk would be of a better quality, but I actually looked on the back of a carton of almond milk and I was shocked with all the ingredients, the emulsifiers, the stabilisers which you, you don't want to be consuming that. When there's like more than four or four to five ingredients of foods, you know, particularly like milk, kind of want to avoid these things as much as possible. So actually using a dairy milk in, in a low quantity, probably be much better rather than almond. So I normally only use about 100 to 100 mil of this. The rest is just put a little bit of water in. Um, and this generally works well for me. So again, I'll normally just weigh that out. We get about 150 mil there, which that's okay. Probably just put like a little bit more. And then I'd probably just put like a tiny bit of water in there as well, just to get the right consistency. Although I might have just put in a little bit too much. So we're going to put on for two minutes. So two minutes we put my protein oats on for. A lot of people don't always know how to make protein oats. I personally think they are one of the nicest meals that you can have. I think that they would fit into most people's diets because they're very easy to make. Um, you can also have like overnight oats as well. So they fit into most people's. If you create the right protein oats recipe, you should find that they taste good. Um, and that, yeah, it's something that you keep as a bit of a staple in your diet. Um, I just have them pre-workout, but you know, you can have oats pretty much anytime, even if you train later on in the day, you'd be able to have your oats in the morning as well. So always like to add to these is I'm just going to get these out ready and prepared is without blueberries. Okay, so I always get frozen 
fruit. I get frozen blueberries. And the reason for that is first, because they don't go off. So it's way easier in terms of storage. They have things like blueberries can go off quite quickly. Um, they're actually a little bit cheaper to get them frozen as well. But the other reason as to why frozen fruit is a lot better is because it doesn't get like all the pesticides and stuff that they put in it, all the, um, you know, potential ingredients they add to it to try and make it stay and last for longer whereas frozen fruit they pick it and then they freeze it so this is actually better quality than going and getting fresh fruit um which is just more expensive and it just goes off quicker as well so always use frozen fruit um which works really well and then what we also add into that is i put 20 grams um, of peanut butter so this peanut butter is actually really good even though it looks like a more of a cheap one it is quite cheap but this is 100 percent peanuts okay that's one thing that you really want to be looking at as much as you can in terms of food Okay, if you get something like peanut butter and you look on the back and it's got loads of different ingredients in it, it's like 70% peanut butter or something like that, you know, what's the extra 30%? You know, that's not going to be a good ingredient, good quality. Um, so this peanut butter, 100% natural, 100% peanuts, really, really good stuff. So I actually have this. It doesn't taste the best, but that's what you'd expect, you know, with a product like this, which is just 100% what it says on the label. That's that one. And then the other thing that I would have um, is whey protein. So this is the whey protein that I use. This is a gold standard whey as an optimal nutrition. This is going to be one of the better ones. Now, I think it's important to make sure that you get a good quality protein powder. Um, I've tried a lot in the past. I've had some bad ones. They wreak havoc on your digestion. So if you're going to use a dairy-based protein, you need to get a good quality one um, that just absorbs better. If you get something that's got a lot of whey protein concentrate in it as its main ingredient, that's like the worst kind of dairy. So um, gold standard whey has always been one that I, I like. It digests well. Um, um, it tastes good as well. It mixes well. So this is one that I've used. As you can see, we've got a massive five kilo bag. This is going to last me for a very long time. Um, I don't have that much of this. I probably have like one to two scoops per day max. I like to get most of my protein from obviously more natural whole foods. Um, however, just to kind of top up a little bit, especially to flavor foods as well. Um, I like to obviously use a protein powder. So we should be ready to go. That's two minutes, which is on the clock. So set the scales back to zero. And then all we're going to do is we're going to add in 100 grams um, of blueberries. So just want you to open the packet a little bit more to make sure we can get them out a little bit more efficiently. There we go. So it's 85, 100 grams. Cool, perfect. So the reason why blueberries are so good as well, because uh, they're very rich in antioxidants. They're a dark fruit. So they're really, really good for our health. Blueberries are super food. They're really good for you. Um, so consuming that on a regular basis, they've got a lot of fiber in them as well. Some fruits, obviously they've got more sugar in them, which isn't a bad thing, but it just means they've got more calories in there. Obviously going to spike insulin a little bit more. Whereas berries generally have got a lot of fiber in them. They're quite low in sugar. Um, and obviously they're quite voluminous as well. Like hundred grams of berries there has, has come across pretty well. So that's good. What I would normally do is this is uh, the key to making your oats. You want to kind of put the berries in first and then mix them around because they're then going to start to defrost in the hot oats. Okay. So obviously you don't want to be eating literally frozen fruit. It tastes like ice. Um, but if I keep doing that, it kind of mixes them a little bit. Then what I would do is put in my protein powder. So you can see kind of the consistency of this, of this, um, to show you guys, but it doesn't look the best. Like you look at the oats and you think like, are they even properly cooked? But what you'll see is the, the better quality oat, okay? The more natural oat, the steel cut oat, the rolled oat, um, they're not gonna mix as well, and that's fine. Like I used to have, like I say, an instant oat before, which tastes good, but it used to just make me crave more food and more carbohydrates. It just shot my insulin right up. So I, I didn't feel like it was a good source of carbohydrate at all, but it, it looked a lot different to this one, whereas this one doesn't look like it mixes very well, but this is a really, really good quality oat, really natural, obviously gluten-free. Um, and actually when mixed in, it does actually taste pretty good. So we've pretty much, well, we've almost got the consistency right um, with this meal. I'd probably just look to add in like a tiny bit of water, just literally a touch of water just to make it a little bit more more of a consistency we get that right and then what i normally do pretty much there we go perfect so really really good meal almost ready to go and then what i normally do is i just literally again so we go 20 grams of peanut butter okay this is one food that you need to weigh okay in fact let's see if we can get another mix of the spoon out what an absolute nightmare <laughs> this is one thing you're never going to see someone ever do again i'm going to use my knife to get this out so this is just one product that you really, really don't want to not weigh because trust me, like you're going to get it wrong. Okay. So we want to be making sure we're getting, getting our 20 grams in. So I've not even actually measured that that well. God, I'm making a complete nightmare of this. But anyway, you get the picture. Cool. So roughly 
but we've got what we want there and then we can put that back so i normally just put the peanut butter on the side and then what i like to do is just mix a little bit in with every single mouthful this is the this is the key to making this meal as nice as possible. So that's my pre-workout meal. I'm, I'm going to get this down. Now, what we need to think about in terms of pre-workout meals, just to finish this on, okay, there's obviously going to be three main ingredients to this meal, protein, carbs, and fats. The reason why we need to get protein in, you know, you want to be getting protein in probably like an hour or two before your workout. That then means that it doesn't necessarily warrant you having a shake or a meal immediately after you train. So you've got more of a window from when you've consumed your pre-workout meal to then when you can actually have your post-workout meal. Now, the reason why this is important is because we want to get our body in an anabolic state when we have our pre-workout meal because when we go into the gym we're going to be breaking down muscle fibers we're going to be obviously working our body where if we have a high protein meal beforehand that's going to aid the growth that's going to aid muscle growth and recovery with that workout so it's going to mean we're going to make that workout a lot more optimal in terms of hypertrophy in terms of muscle protein synthesis so you know your pre-workout meal in terms of getting in your protein is arguably going to be more important doing that um, rather than obviously the post-workout window and if you do have your pre-workout the night before and you don't have the opportunity to do this in the morning it just means you need to get that post-workout feed in like right after you train so you know you don't want to be like doing an intermittent fast if you are a person that trains first thing in the morning because that that first protein feeding post-workout is going to be super important so that's why we have protein with our pre-workout meal super important in terms of carbohydrates so carbohydrates are our body's preferred and most efficient source of energy okay so when we eat carbohydrates to get broken down into glucose okay this glucose is what fuels your workout so you need to be making sure you get this in pre-workout Workout. You ideally want to be getting in roughly one gram of carbohydrate like per kilo of your body weight, roughly. So for me, I'm about 85, 80, 90 kilos at the moment. Roughly, I'm consuming about 85, 90 grams of carbohydrates pre workout. That's just like a rule of thumb. You could go a little bit under that, but it's essential really that you do get carbohydrates pre workout in. Having gone through keto, I know that I perform much better um, off having carbs pre workout because I just I felt, I felt okay when I was doing the ketogenic diet, but it just wasn't as optimal as the way that I feel now. I get a much better pump and I get much better energy. So it's really important to make sure you get your carbohydrates in pre-workout. You want to choose good quality carbohydrates, not crap quality carbohydrates like sugary cereal um, and stuff like that. You want to be making sure you get good quality carbs like oatmeal, like sweet potato, um, potentially something like some rice and quinoa. You want to be looking at more natural sources. And lastly, we've got fat. Now, the reason why fat I think are really needed pre-workout is because fat slow down the digestion of food. Okay, so if we just smash a meal that's really high in protein and carbohydrates, you're essentially going to spike your insulin really high. And then when you get to the gym, maybe like halfway through your workout, you're going to experience potentially a bit of a crash. I mean, I used to get this. I used to have like Cocoa Pops pre-workout. Um, and I find that at the start, I'd feel good. And then by the time I got to my third or fourth exercise, I just feel terrible because I'd just be crashing. So when we have fats in our diet, it slows down digestion of food. It means we're going to get a more stable and more sustainable uh, source of energy throughout that workout, which is obviously going to make the workout way more optimal, less crashes, more efficiency, better quality workout. So that that's roughly how you want to conduct your pre-workout meal. You want high protein, you want moderately to high carbohydrates, and you want kind of low to moderate fat. Again, depends on you as a person, the goal that you've got, you know, the kind of macros that you're following at that current point. But anyway, I'm going to get this down me. This is kind of how it looks when it's ready to go. In my opinion, one of the best meals that you can have. So really looking forward to eating that. I um, hope you found this video useful, guys. Please make sure you smash the like button if you have. Make sure you are subscribing for future videos coming up. Hit the bell notification so you know if I ever time I post on YouTube and I will catch you in the next video.